Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and uh, every year the United Nations comes up with their um, annual report about this time of the year, you know, in, uh, you know, usually in March sometime. And uh, this is their report on the state of the global climate in 2023. So it's hot off the presses as of um, within the last week. And uh, I'm going to talk about the key metrics and findings in this very sobering report. And it's open access, so you can all have a look at it. So this is the um, news release on it. The WMO, World Meteorological Organization, report State of the Global Climate in 2023. Um, the article was from March 25th, 2024, less than a week ago. So the, the World Meteorological Organization, they come out with this report on an annual basis, State of the Global Climate, this is the 2023 version, summarizing what happened last year. Last year broke every single climate indicator to be by far the warmest year on record. Okay, so concentrations of greenhouse gases continued to rise at record rates, ocean heat content, sea level reached record observed highs. The rate of increase of the climate metrics is accelerating. Antarctic sea ice extent hit record observed lows and key glaciers suffered record losses. Never have we been so close to the 1.5 C lower limit of the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. In fact, we broke it according to some records, but according to the um, amalgamation of all of the different um, sources for global temperatures, we were just slightly below the 1.5 limit, as, as I'll show you in a graph last year. We had heat waves, floods, droughts, wildfires, intense tropical cyclones that wreaked havoc on every continent and caused huge socioeconomic losses. There were particularly devastating consequences for vulnerable populations who suffered disproportionate impacts. Extreme climate conditions exacerbated humanitarian crises with millions of people around the world experiencing acute food insecurity and hundreds of thousands of people displaced from their homes around the globe. The WMO is committed to stepping up collaboration with the international community to confront the enormity of this challenge. So it's a very sobering report. So let's have a look at it. There's a link in this article to it. So it's called State of the Global Climate 2023. And so it just came out. And uh, so it's got global climate indicators. It talks a bit about some renewables and things, climate drivers, precipitation, ozone, extreme weather and climate events, and then some of the socioeconomic impacts. And there's also a section on the state of climate finance and the finance gap. Now, this is interesting. So please have a look at the report, read it, and you can actually provide feedback to the authors. So the World Meteorological Organization team has launched a process to gather feedback on these reports and areas they can improve them. So once you read it, then you can do a short survey and you can add additional comments. So I highly recommend that you do that. So here's the key messages. 2023 was the warmest year on record. It was 1.45 plus or minus 0.12 Celsius above the pre-industrial average. And it defines the, the pre-industrial to be 1850 to 1900, the average between those years. Concentrations of the three main greenhouse gases, CO2, methane and nitrous oxide, reach record high observed levels. Ocean heat content reached its highest level in its 65 year observational record. Global mean sea level reached a record high. The rate of sea level rise in the past 10 years, 2014 to 2023, has more than doubled since the first decade of the satellite record, i.e. 1993 to 2002. Sea level rise is uh, approaching nearing about five millimeters per year really, really fast acceleration. 
Antarctic sea ice extent reached an absolute record low in February. It's supposed to be at its maximum. The annual maximum extent was about a million square kilometers below the previous record maximum. Glaciers around the planet had the largest loss of ice on record over the, from 1950 to 2023. The records driven by extremely negative mass balance in both Western North America and Europe. Glaciers in Switzerland lost about 10% of the remaining volume in the past two years. And extreme weather has continued to lead to severe socioeconomic impacts. Extreme heat affected many parts of the world. Wildfires in Hawaii, Canada, and Europe led to loss of life, destruction of homes, and large-scale widespread air pollution. Flooding associated with extreme rainfall from Mediterranean Cyclone Daniel affected Greece, Bulgaria, Turkey, and Libya. There was very heavy loss of life in Libya when a few dams failed. Food security, population displacement, and impacts on vulnerable populations continue to be of mounting concern with weather and climate hazards exacerbating the situation in many parts of the world. Okay, so it's a very sobering report. Um, the, uh, the climate crisis is a defining challenge that humanity faces. This is from, um, this is from Professor Celeste Solo, who's the Secretary General. Um, extreme climate conditions exacerbated humanitarian crises. And the WMO and its members are expanding life-saving early warning services. They want to achieve what they call the early warnings for all initiative, you know, to provide uh, people, you know, a chance when they're about to be hit by extreme weather events. So the global climate change indicators, they look at every year, okay? And these indicators are changing so quickly in a negative fashion they have cascading impacts on national development and progress toward the UN Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs. You know, how can we possibly achieve SDGs when things are changing? Okay, uh, so let's have a look. Greenhouse gases, we'll just look at the plots. So here's the greenhouse gases. This is carbon dioxide. This is methane, nitrous oxide. You can see uptick, sharp uptick here. There's an uptick here at the end. This is the, the growth rate of, of carbon dioxide. And you can see, you know, it wasn't maximum in 2023, but uh, the maximum was over, well over three parts per million. But 2024, I think, might be a very a big surprise, you know, and it set a new record. Methane growth rates were huge. Um, we, we passed about 17 parts per billion per year. Um, and, uh, you know, the last few years have been very, very high. Same with nitrous oxide growth rates, record high growth rates for these greenhouse gases. Okay, um, temperatures. So here's the temperature record um, from uh, six different data sets. You know, you can see the agreement gets better and better as you, you know, from 1960 on, it's, it's very, very close agreement between all these data sets. And we we're at 1.45 is what we reached um, above pre-industrial, above the uh, 1.45, above the 1850 to 1900 average. The analysis is based on a synthesis of six global temperature data sets 2023 was the warmest year in the 174 year instrumental record in each of the data sets. Past nine years, 2015 to 2023, were the nine warmest years on record. The two previous warmest years were 2016 with the anomaly of 1.29 and 2020 with the anomaly of 1.27. Well, now we're, war I mean, so we blew away the previous temperature records. This is the, uh, near surface temperature anomalies relative to a fairly recent climatology in fact the most recent one 1991 to 2020 so you don't see uh, there's even though you're taking this very recent average climatological average 30-year average you're still getting ex temperature extremes in the arctic um, and no northern north north america northern canada um, also in Asia and 
you can see, you know, the very, very warm continents, the heat going from west to east at these latitudes across the ocean, warming those regions. Also, the heat is going across in the Atlantic. The North Atlantic is really, really warm. Down here, we have the trade winds coming this way. So the, the heat anomaly is like this. And of course, we have really high heat in parts of Antarctica as well. The ocean heat content reached its highest level in the 65-year observational record. So here is ocean heat content, joules per square meter, four different data sets. You can see that again, you know, after 2000, they're, they're all pretty much converging. And you can see, uh, you know, we're getting record high levels of ocean heat. So global ocean heat content anomalies. Um, this is the zero to 2000 meter depth layer from 1960 to 2023. Um, and you can see there's more and more ocean, uh, energy going in the ocean. In fact, around 90% of the energy that's accumulated in the Earth's system since 1971 is stored in the ocean. As energy is accumulating, is accumulated in the ocean, it's warmed and the heat content of the ocean has increased. Okay, another one is sea level rise. Okay, so we're setting new records in sea level rise. First of all, here's the upper 2000 meter trend from 1958 to 2023. Um, you can see um, this is the ocean heat content trends. You can see you know, lots of warming here south of Australia, but the whole Atlantic Ocean is going nuts. So we've got the North Atlantic Ocean here, we've got the South Atlantic Ocean. The whole thing is has shown tremendous warming, you know, over this time period. Um, and, uh, you know, so it's, it's storing more and more heat is going into these parts. This is over two watts per square meter of, of uh, area on, you know, that's the power per unit area warming the oceans. This is sea level rise. We had 2.13 millimeters per year from January 1993 to December 2002. Then we had an increase of 3.33 millimeters a year from 2003 to 2012. And look at this, from January 2014 to December 2023, 4.77 millimeters per year. The trend overall is 3.43. The acceleration is 0.12 millimeters per per year squared okay but in the last uh you know decade it's 4.77 so it's the curves going up faster and faster sea level rise this is showing the altimetry based sea level anomalies relative to the 1993 to 2012 average uh, for january to march 2023 so Jan january to march Okay, you can see the anomalies. This is up to 0.3 meters here. And so very high sea level rise here. And here you can see how it's distributed. April, May, June, you can see the Southern Hemisphere is warming. This is indicative of, uh, you know, the El Nino starting. And then July, August, September, you can see parts of the uh, Northern, Northern Hemisphere, huge amount of sea level anomalies because the ocean's just warming so much faster there, water expands. And right here, look at this huge anomaly here. Um, and uh, over here, you know, pretty much the north, the oceans in the north past 30 degrees north, super warm, super, super warm. Um, marine uh, heat waves and cold spells. Well, these are, <laughs> these are heat wave areas. So this is showing the highest marine heat wave category in experienced at each pixel over 2023. Okay, so we had huge heat, huge ocean warming here, of course, here in, in the Arctic too, and there were regions here, very, very warm, Mediterranean, very, very warm. I wonder why there was strong uh, uh, hurricane there, cyclone. Um, you know, lots of warming. And this is the daily marine heat wave coverage for o the ocean. Um, so there's heat waves throughout the year increasing, you know, as you go towards the end of the year with more and more area being under heat waves, marine heat waves. This is the cumula uh, cumulative uh, average marine heat wave days increasing. 
uh, for 2023, and you can see the different types of marine heat waves, the moderate, strong, and more and more of these severe and extreme uh, marine heat waves. This is cooling. <laughs> there's some areas where there, 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 there's, you know, setting marine, uh, MCS is marine cold spells. Uh, I believe it stands for marine cold spells. Marine cold spells, MCS, and you can see there's some occurring, uh, but uh, you know it's not significant across the planet. We're getting fewer and fewer over time. It's all going to the marine heat waves. Ocean acidification. The oceans are getting much more acidic. This is pH 8.11 going to under under 8.05. Um, you know, as the oceans absorb more and more CO2, you get carbonic acid and they're becoming more acidic. The cryosphere, the sea ice. Okay, so this is the northern hemisphere. This is the daily Arctic sea ice extent from January through December in 2023. Um, showing the red line for 2023 against the climate normals and the variability. Showing the record high curve the average curve, record low curves, you know, so we didn't set record lows, but we're, you know, so it's surprising a lot of people that we haven't had this blue ocean event. It looked like it was really going to happen, but maybe the AMOC shutting down is enough to, well, it looks like the AMOC shut, slowing down is enough to compensate and keep some of the, keep the ice up there. So it hasn't disappeared off to a blue ocean event yet. And I talked about in some recent paper, um, videos, this is Antarctica, uh, so huge uh, break, you know, 2023 extent, way below normal for lots of the year in Antarctica. I mean, it's at the bottom. It, it, it's not almost at the bottom. It passed something, and now it's at the bottom, record bottom, and then since, you know, November or so, it's been hovering around the bottom, but not quite the record low. This is what it looks like. This is a medium extent, 1981 to 2010, the yellow line, and this is what we we experienced. I believe this was uh, this was ice concentration on September 10th, 2023, the 2023 annual maximum extent. You can see how much ice is missing, um, you know, at the maximum. Lots of ice missing. Uh, ice sheets, uh, this is Greenland melt days, uh, cumulative melt days uh, in 2023, and this shows the 2023 melt percentage. You know, a lot of the time we were spiking up to about 50% of Greenland being under melting um, at various periods. And uh, yeah, it's just uh, lots of lots of melt. So the Greenland ice sheet continuing down here, you know, at almost accelerating rates uh, recently. Antarct Antarctic ice sheet, interestingly enough, uh, shows uh, shows a, shows a bit of a reversal here. So I'm not sure what what's going on there. Is it getting? This is from measured from the uh, Grace gravitational mass balance data. So I'm not sure, you know, what's causing this. Um, you know, we're because at the same time that we're setting record lows in Antarctic sea ice, it looks like there's some gains here. So this needs to be explained. I'm not sure what's going on there. Glaciers um, on mountains, on land, uh, have been dropping off significantly. This is the annual mass change in meters of water equivalent. Um, this is of reference glaciers with more than 30 years of ongoing measurements. And you can see, uh, you know, the acceleration of mass loss for glaciers. This is specifically uh, total annual loss of Swiss glaciers related to current ice volume. You know, we lost in, in the last few years, we've lost 5.9%, 4.4%. That's nine, that's over 10% in the last couple of years. We've lost over 10% of what's left of the volume of Swiss glaciers in the last couple of years. This is ice volume uh, showing the drop off and the and the and the, the actual downslope and increase increasing loss of ice volume. Uh, this is a glacier in BC. Also the elevation change, you know, 
widespread loss of the glacier, thinning of the glacier. You can see the net mass balance dropping off a cliff here in the last few years. So huge loss of glacial ice in certain parts of, of the planet. Now seasonal snow cover in the northern hemisphere, this is uh, from 1970, pre-70 onwards, and you can see the loss of snow cover. This is in the uh, spring and summer, late spring and summer. Northern Hemisphere snow cover extent for May was the eighth lowest on record. North American snow cover for May was the lowest on record from between 1967 and, and, and 2023. So lowest on record. Um, this is North America, lowest on record. Northern Hemisphere, you know, it didn't quite set a record, but it was close. Okay, so snow cover, there's a bit on climate monitoring and renewable energy. It shows how renewable energy um, in, in five different African countries in some of these plots. Stratospheric ozone and ozone depleting gases. Well, Southern Hemisphere ozone hole area, this is what it's like in, in 2023. Um, set a high here, a, a area of millions of square square kilometers of ozone, the ozone hole, size of the ozone hole, and then decreasing off here. This is in 2022 is the blue curve. 2021 is the green curve. So you can see, you know, we peaked and then we dropped quicker than, than in pre the last couple of years. This is the total amount of ozone um, in Dobson units. Um, and so we set, we, we set uh, records here. The three most recent years are shown, um, and uh, you know we, we we bottomed out here and and then climbed up here. You can compare it to some previous years. Um, short term drivers. It talks about the Enso. You know we had the El Nino here, but it was nowhere near as strong as the 2015 one or the 1998 one. I've talked about that in previous videos quite a bit. The Indian Ocean Dipole effects, the North Atlantic oscillations, right? There's some other details. Precipitation. This is total precipitation in 2023. Um, so the the top 20% are the green areas. The top, well, the top 10% of precipitation, the wettest are the dark green. You can see where the rain fell, you know, a lot up north, in fact. Well, that's rain and snow. Uh, you can see, so the top 20% uh, are the light green and the green, and then you can see the, the bottom 10% is the dark brown, and the bottom uh, brown, dark brown plus light brown is in the bottom 20%, and you can see these large areas of, within continents where we're setting, uh, you know, we're, 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 it's like boom or bust. It's like you get no rain if you're here, get flooded out if you're here, right? It's like boomer, boomer, you know, boomer bust. It's all interspersed. So, so we're getting a lot of extreme weather and climate events. Of course, the trends are leading to more and more severe socioeconomic impacts: extreme heat, wildfires, flooding, you know, loss of life. I mean, I've talked about a lot of this stuff. I mean, look at the. This is area, annual area burned in Canada. 1986 to 2023 and millions of hectares. Now I thought Canada was 18 and a half million hectares. I'm not sure that has to be checked, but you can see how out of whack this was. I mean, you know, look at this. This is like, a, you know, just over a million, uh, you know, hectares burned. And then we go up to, this shows almost 15, but again, I thought this was 18 or 18 and a half. Anyway, if you take the average somewhere around here, you know, two maybe, you know, this is like seven, eight times worse, right? So let's see what happens this year. Um, and then socioeconomic impacts, they talk about, you know, food security, population displacement, the impacts of vulnerable populations, how these are getting to be more and more concerning. Um, and, uh, you know, food security, the number of people who are acutely food insecure worldwide is more than doubled from 149 million people before the COVID-19 pandemic to 333 million people in 2023 in 78 monitored countries by the WFP. 
World Food Program, I guess. Global hunger levels remained unchanged from 2021 to 2022, still way above uh, pre-COVID-19 levels. In 2022, 9.2% .2 of the global population, that's 735.1 million people, were undernourished compared to 7.9% of the population in 2019. The current global food and nutrition crisis is the largest in modern human history. Protracted conflicts, economic downturns, and high food prices, so inflation further exacerbated the high costs of agricultural inputs, driving to ongoing and widespread conflict, driven by ongoing and widespread conflict around the world or at the root of high global food insecurity levels. Okay, so, you know, this shows you two things. Um, it shows you the global prevalence of undernourishment as a percentage. That's the gray curve and this is on the scale on the left. So it dropped here. This is 2005 to now, so it dropped, but it's gone up again. Okay, it's, it's, it's actually um, reaching levels that it, you know, it's going to higher and higher levels um, and we thought we'd made a lot of progress in this, but it's been reversed. And this is the number of million of millions of people, uh, number of undernourished people in millions since 2005, showing that that's also rising. So these things are all heading the wrong way um, as the climate um, becomes more unpredictable and there's more and more uh, extreme weather events. The number of millions of people including internally displaced persons refugees and migrants are on the move or have been forced to flee their homes and communities because of disasters exacerbated by climate stresses and shocks w weather hazards are triggering new prolonged and secondary displacement right so and there's an estimated 3.4 million refugees and internally displaced people in syria lebanon jordan iraq and egypt um and it talks about, you know, migrate, migration, you know, and the reasons why the migration is occurring from due to the climate related shocks. It talks about the hit to the, the sustain, sustainable development goals, the SDGs, how many of them have turned and are go now going in the wrong direction again because of all of the um, climate extremes and heat waves and temperatures. Now, the state of climate finance, I'm not going to talk about too much talks about global climate flows of money reached US dollar 1.3 trillion nearly doubling compared to 2019 to 2020 levels but despite this growing momentum in climate finance track flows represent only 1% of global gdp um, so there's a huge financing gap and uh, the, the the cost of inaction is is higher than what we're spending so they show here this is 2011 to 2012, the climate finance 364. Here it is at 1.265 trillion. This is US billion, so this would be 1,265 US billion, which is 1.2 trillion, 1.3 almost. So it's showing it's increasing, good, but here's what we need. Okay, this is the range and this is, this is what we need as we go out. Right, and this doesn't even account for tipping points in the climate system. So tipping points can shoot you way up above and beyond this. Okay, and there's a lot of data sources and there's details on like, for example, the temperatures, um, the from all the different data sets. And, uh, you know, there's lots of data to support everything in this report. So thanks for listening. Um, so basically, this is a summary of the state of the global climate in 2023, and that it was a year when we set records galore in just about all climate metrics. Thanks for listening. Please consider going to my PayPal to donate to support my research and videos. Thanks again, and bye for now.